still believe that objective reality is on their side and they feel a need to appeal to it, right? They do feel a need to appeal to it. Right. Now, the, the and, and communists and, and, do. And, and my point is, Honest. I'm not trying to be dense. No, no, no. no, no, no. But it's like, like, it seemed to me that you were suggesting, and maybe I misunderstood you, the notion that there is an objective reality about human beings and human needs. Right. That is the baby. And you seem to be suggesting that communists or social justice activists are throwing out that the baby. The social justice activists are throwing that baby be out. The communists are not. They were modernists. They just had a wrong answer. Yeah, okay. So that would be like you get up every morning and you look at the sunrise and you watch it go across and you're like, oh, obviously the earth's at the center. Right. It's just wrong, but yeah. it's based on an observations of, of reality. The social justice movement is not that. The social justice movement believes that knowledge is socially constructed, wholly socially constructed. It is the product of a culture and the truth is a local object within that culture. And when we first had the postmodernists in the 60s talking about this, they thought of cultures like, you know, mid-century France or something like this, you know, something that's actually a culture. Now we have this broken down into identity politics categories where the cultures are black and politically black and queer or gay. These are, and those are all distinct, by the way. Um, and then they have this complicated hierarchy of intersectionality of how they, they interact with one another and overlap with one another and, and influence one another. Um, but they do not have a belief that objective reality, they may believe it exists, they don't believe it is knowable. It is only locally knowable. They believe that the fundamental nature of society is that it has been constructed with oppression and that oppression is the only objective rock and that oppression has to be overthrown. So the re other realities of human nature are utterly, utterly, irrelevant to them. They don't believe in such a thing. There is no universal human nature. There are cultures, and those cultures are now identity groups. And that is a oh, profound shift. And the communists didn't have this. The communists were, strictly speaking, in the philosophical sense, modernists. In fact, they're, in a sense, too modernist. They believed if they could get kind of mechanistic enough about how things went, then you know they could have the perfect ordering of society and achieve the communist utopia. So theirs is a different kind of rejection. But the social justice thing is a fundamental denial that objective truth is knowable by anybody. In law, there we have a reasonable person standard. According to this, there would be no reasonable person. There are only biased people. You're biased white, you're biased male, you're biased black, you're biased female, whatever it is. They're, that's all they've got. And how would they justify their own positive positions then? Because they're morally correct they achieve liberation and they will be judged as such by the eye at the end of history. They achieve liberation from oppression. So it's, it's like they see a problem, something that's causing them to feel held back, something maybe it's legitimate, maybe it's not legitimate, maybe it's something that hurts their feelings because having your feelings hurt does hold you back. Microaggressions, the idea is that you aren't really being discriminated against, but you have to listen to lots of little BS that wears you out all the time. And then that wears you down and it holds you back. So there's something holding you back, and if you just got that thing out of the way, then it'd be okay. And the, the, that is the whole goal, is to take whatever is subjectively assessed to be in one's way, and that has to be subjectively assessed to be, to be kosher with their program, through a lens of understanding the systemic power dynamics, because systemic power is the thing that does the oppressing. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily that white people oppress Black people, it's the systemic power relation that white people have constructed, whiteness, white supremacy, whatever you want to call it, that is, is oppressing racial minorities. So that power structure is the thing doing the oppressing. And anything that disrupts that power structure is the morally necessary thing to do. But their problem is, is that they've decided that that is to be wholly subjectively assessed. So objective reality is now no longer knowable. There is no objective reality. There's your truth and there's my truth, but there is no the truth. And their moral correctness is not an example of objective reality? There are some contradictions at the heart of their entire project, you may have noticed. But believing that logical consistency and epistemic adequacy is, is needed is listed explicitly in their literature as one of the master's tools. In other words, one of the things that creates oppression. So when you say, well, that doesn't make sense, they'd say that that's actually you using the epistemic system to oppress ideas that don't have to make sense. Right. And that's where you see theorists like Kelly Oliver, who's a feminist theorist writing in 1989, that the goal at that time and that they were arriving, in 1989 they were arriving at the place 
where we no longer had to deal with true theories, and I don't know why she says it this way, true theories and false theories, but we can only deal with strategic theories. And the reason she says that is to get away from the, uh, what was it, the, something like the, the hegemonic or iron grip of recalcitrant nature. The, the belief that nature itself is an objective arbiter that you can't get around. Nope, political strategy will get you around it eventually. That was the belief of people at the end of the 1980s. So going into the 1980s and 1990s, you have this belief where, where political strategy is the only thing that's relevant. True and false, no longer relevant. And this accords, if you wanna go back to the postmodernist, to, to it's a distortion of Michel Foucault's point that there uh, are truth claims in the world, and some of them may be true, and some of them may be false. But Michel Foucault's point, where he's talking about the epistem idea, was that it doesn't, it's less important whether they're actually true or false and more important to pay attention to the process by which they're determined to be true or false, which he said is inherently political and inherently is an application of an expression of power. And so you can see how that kind of progressed through time. But at this point, for, for, for the woke, it is, there is no objective reality that's knowable. There are warring power structures. And the moral thing to do has to be to get rid of any power structure that's, that's limiting any other power structure. But they've got a very um, ossified and cartoonish understanding of these power structures based, for example, I know I'm rambling a bit, but off of Derek Bell's idea, uh, 1992, Faces at the Bottom of the Well, subtitle of that book, The Permanence of Racism. I got criticized at one point for saying one of the first assumptions of critical race theory is that racism is the ordinary state of affairs in society that's explicitly given as their first assumption. And then secondly, that it's permanent, which is not usually listed in the, in the same sentence, for example. Well, Derek Bell's 1992 book, Faces the Bottom of the Well, carries the subtitle, The Permanence of Racism. So then I got criticized for that, and somebody said, he said permanence, not permanent. But then there's an interview from 1993 of him talking about this book from 1992 saying racism is permanent. It doesn't go away, it changes shape, it changes form. There is no getting rid of it. So this is a view that these power structures that they've seen, whether it's white supremacy or whiteness as they might call it, whether it's patriarchy, misogyny, sexism, uh, whether it's homophobia uh, and heteronormativity kind of as a thing, whether it's uh, now cisnormativity and transphobia, ableism, disableism, fat phobia, the, the list goes on and on. In all of those cases, that those power dynamics are already baked into our system because our system, meaning the liberal order, was created by able-bodied, straight, white Western men in Europe who had all the privileges that being in that situation afforded them. And so until that, they see that as a closed epistem, what Foucault would call an, an epistem, a closed kind of bubble of reality in which all of the power dynamics are already set and locked and they don't change except by popping the bubble and getting, it, getting rid of it entirely, by overthrowing the liberal order itself. And so this is a fundamentally different thing and they do not believe that there's objective truth because each of these subcultures that has a different relation to the power structures in the bubble has a completely different understanding and therefore has its own truth that it socially constructs, and they are trapped within it, but they hold privileged position within it by virtue of being oppressed. It yeah. sounds more complicated than it is. Once, it, once you like click into it and see how they actually think about the world, you're like, oh, that's it? Mm -hmm. But until you get it, it's like, this, none of it makes sense. And that's correct, because it ex explicitly questions the idea of rationality, of epistemic adequacy, of soundness, and validity of argument. These are, I'm not making these words up like, these are ones I'm pulling out of my memory out of the literature. I can tell you which papers they came out of. Um, you know, like I said, liberal order, equality theory, neutral principles of constitutional law, epistemic adequacy, soundness of argument, validity of argument. Um, frankly, knowing what you're talking about, true theories versus false theories to be replaced by strategic theories. I'll refer to third phase postmodernism.